Hey there. Welcome back to Everything's a Project. So this is a fixture I was making on the mill um, that goes on the solid 5C arbor. So on the first video that I made, I ran out of memory on the card, so it got cut short. And I was in the middle of doing the counter bores. And um, so now I have it on the lathe. I did the OD and I'm doing the final cut on the face. And then, then I'll get the bolt pattern for the work piece. Um, one thing I wanted to mention from that first video is that I used the edge finder to pick up the aluminum piece in the on the mill, but in the past I've mentioned it, but I did not save the zero in incremental and absolute. So when I use use the bolt hole pattern um, function on the DRO, I did it all in incremental, but it draws the um, dimensions from the absolute. And um, so I was pretty far off. When I first spun this, um, it, it was terrible. I had to take three quarters of an inch out of the diameter, which is fine because I wanted it to be less than the workpiece that we're going to be doing. Um, but that's kind of rough on the lathe. You know, it, was, it was out of balance. Um, so anyways, it's good now. The, um, I have to remember that uh, in the future. Um, I made another video that picked up where that left off and it had um, me doing counter bores and then two of the bolt positions are shoulder bolts um, so that they essentially indicate the aluminum plate to the base plate. I wanted to use those instead of um, uh, dowel pins because that would just it makes it easier to take apart, and they're close. They only had like two thousandths clearance on each side. Uh, but that video came out terrible. Um, the camera wouldn't stay in focus, and then, uh, and it might be because it was reflecting off of my chip guard, so I got to investigate that. The other thing is, I was using a five C. I'll go get it. I was using this 5C holder, but it didn't really like a solid 5C mount. You know, most 5Cs are like a collet where they're split. So you draw, so when you, you get it tight to a certain point, then you pull the lever and it draws and squeezes it full tight. The base I'm using is solid. It doesn't have that. So anyways, it took me 10 minutes to get it off of there. It was very agonizing. What you did miss out on, though, is some geopolitical talk I had while I was fighting with that. Uh, I was just going over all the different conflicts that are going on around the world and connecting the dots between them. So, one of the ones that nobody had on their bingo card was Sunni versus Shia Islam. And um, that one could turn out to be the big one. So, in Iran, they were doing a, uh, a memorial service for Soleimani, who was killed a few years ago. And ISIS detonated two bombs at that gathering and killed uh, over a hundred Iranians and um, you know, a lot of people group group them all together but Iran is made up of Shia uh, Muslims and ISIS is mostly Sunni so then Iran gets involved directly because 
Up until now, they've been using their proxy fighters, the Houthis in Yemen, the and Hamas in uh, Gaza, and Hezbollah in um, Lebanon. Well, they directly attacked uh, some Sunni positions in Syria, and then they also attacked um, a position in Iraq that's had multiple different, um, the media's been reporting it differently, so sometimes it was an Iraqi outpost, sometimes it was a U.S. consulate, and other times they said it was a Israeli uh, spy um, uh, base. So it could have been all three. Um, and what it could have been is Sunni um, factions in Iraq and Syria, and sorry, and Israel working together um, in the war against uh, the Iranian proxy fighters. Um, and then um, what Iran did is then they attacked Pakistan probably for the same reasons. Pakistan is a, a Sunni nation and they're also nuclear, have nuclear weapons. And then Pakistan hit back at Iran. Now, where it broadens or could broaden is Saudi Arabia is Iran's enemy, and that's a Sunni Shia split. And Saudi Arabia has been fighting the Houthis for years in Yemen, and both Saudi Arabia and Iran are jonesing for nuclear weapons. So if this escalates, you could have Iran get their nuclear technology from North Korea because they're, they're brothers with Russia in the, Russia's war against the Ukraine. And then Pakistan could give the nuclear weapons technology to Saudi Arabia for, you know, if they partner up. And um, so things are, things are a pretty good mess out there right now. Um, another thing that's happened is that Turkey has attacked um, the Kurds that are in uh, between Syria and Turkey. And that's another interesting scenario because there's a couple different factions of Kurds. There's the Peshmerga, which is a Western friendly force, and then there's uh, the Iraqi Kurds, which were persecuted by Saddam Hussein. Um, but then the ones um, in the Syria, Turkey region are um, the PKK, and they're a terrorist organization against Turkey, and their political leanings are communism. Um, but during the Syrian civil war, when we were involved with it more, um, President Obama sided with the well, he, had, he used the Kurds, the PKK Kurds, as our proxy to do the fighting. So essentially we, we funded and trained Turkey's enemy. Turkey is a NATO ally of ours. So if you're ever wondering why our relationship with Turkey went south, that's why. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot going on. Uh, North Korea and South Korea have exchanged uh, fire with each other. 
Um, the, the war in Ukraine has turned into a stalemate. Rumor has it that we're working on exit strategy now because it's, at best, it's, it's just a stalemate. You know, we don't win wars anymore. We just fiddle fuck around and um, the only people that lose are the civilians. That's nice and smooth in China. And um, so there's also a push to uh, wrap up the war in, in Gaza. And I think there's only two ways that's actually going to happen is that if Hamas completely um, surrenders or they're completely eliminated. And I think um, either a third of the troop, third of the Hamas fighters have been eliminated or two thirds. I know it's a big range of numbers, but it's hard to keep track of them all. Something like 20,000. And then there's a lot of civilians, just like in. in uh, oops. Just like in um, Ukraine, they're suffering. The only caveat to the people in Gaza is they, unfortunately, are kind of duped by Hamas. And they, they were standing behind Hamas. Um, And that's, that's a bad deal. Hamas is like the El Sharpton of, of uh, Palestine. Just uh, instigators. The poor people that they live through all this every day. Now they got taken advantage of. So that's probably it for what I want to say about that stuff. Because nothing simple, nothing straightforward. Um, but everything gets complicated when you don't have strong leaders to, you know, just like at home, you know, you tended not to get in trouble if you came home and got spanked by your, your parents, you know. That's kind of how the world works too. A lot of a lot of countries didn't get the memo about being, uh, you know, new wave, new age leadership. A lot of them are still work off of the alpha and, you know, strength type of, uh, you know, primordial or primal uh, way of doing things. You know, like Putin. You only understand it when you get spanked. You know, you got some people that would call Trump Putin's puppet. Well, Trump killed 300 Russians in Syria because they were they wanted to fuck around. They found out. You know, and then Trump surprised the shit out of. The Iranians, when he took out Soleimani, they shut up. They were down to their last four billion dollars uh, when Trump was off in office. Now, because of the sanctions getting removed and some of the other stuff like high oil prices, Iran has over two hundred billion dollars available to them. And you see how they like to spend it. Okay. So that's good for now. I gotta move on to a different project. So that you're caught up on this. Yeah, so these two are um, shoulder bolts, the rest are regular cap screws. Oh, real quick. Use it quick. I guess this is blocks it. I have to do this better when it's back off the plate. Okay, so that's all I want to do is kind of wrap up this project. I left it kind of hanging. 
I know you're all we're in suspense in part two. But okay, we gotta get cleaned up. I got a cool thing coming, but I don't know if I can show you. Um, but I gotta get the shop cleaned up because I need some clean working space to lay stuff out. So I have uh, um, you know, pro some more pro stuff. Anywho, uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks a lot. Appreciate everything. And uh, take care.